Hello everyone, this is Sir Mayat and in this video, we are going to discuss the limit of a function through tables of values and graphs. Okay, and to start, let us define first limit of a function. Okay, limit is said to be the backbone of calculus. That's why we need to really understand and master limit for us to understand the other concepts in basic calculus. And the study of limits or the evaluation of a particular limit is what underlies the formulation of the derivative and the integral of a function. Ito yung dalawang main focus ng basic calculus. So yung derivative is computed using this formula while yung integral naman ay kinu-compute using this formula. So, yung nakikita yung lim sa mga formula denotes the limit of the function. Okay? So, from that, you need to really understand limit para alam nyo kung paano isusolve yung derivative at yung integral ng function. Okay, so how do we define the limit of a function? So consider a function f of a single variable x and a constant c which the variable x will approach. Here, c may or may not be in the domain of f. The limit of the function f of x as x approaches c is equal to l written as this one. So, this is the notation for the limit. So, how do we read this one? So, ah, ganito lang yung gagawin nyo. Limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to L. Okay? So, mangyayari yan if for any epsilon greater than 0, however small, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that the absolute value of f of x minus L is less than epsilon whenever the absolute value of x minus c is between 0 and delta. So, anong ibig sabihin ng definition na to? Okay? Para mas maintindihan itong definition, himay-himayin natin yung mga notation na ginamit dito. First, we have kadakuha nyo raw ng epsilon greater than 0, makakakita ka ng delta greater than 0. So, ano ba yung epsilon at delta? So, yung epsilon at yung delta, nagre-represent lang ng very small positive number. Okay? So, yung dalawang notations dito, or yung dalawang variables, epsilon at delta, represent a very small positive number. Okay? So, mga maliliit lang yan na positive number. Ngayon, the absolute value of f of x minus L is less than epsilon rao. Now, recall, absolute value denotes distance. Okay? Natutunan natin yan sa grade 7. That's why we have absolute value of 5 which is equal to the absolute value of 5 minus 0 is equal to 5, right? Kasi yung distance ng 5 from 0 is equal to 5. We also have absolute value of negative 4. This is equal to the absolute value of negative 4 minus 0. And what is the distance between negative 4 and 0? That is equal to 4. Tama? That's why the absolute value of negative 4 is equal to 4. So, absolute value, nagdi-denote lang yan sa distance. So, in this case, yung distance pala ni f of x at ni l ay less than epsilon. Ibig sabihin, yung distance ng f of x at ni l ay very small kasi si epsilon that is a very small positive number. So, yung distance ni f of x at ni l ay very small. And paano ba yan mangyayari? Kapag, so mangyayari lang yan kapag 
si f of x ay lalapit ng lalapit kay L. Kasi si f of x dito, siya yung variable. Siya yung pwedeng mag-change. While si L, siya yung limit. So, that is your limit. So, fix siya. Okay? So, si L ay fix or a constant. While f of x is a variable. So, si f of x yung lalapit ng lalapit kay L. So, para mangyari yan, si f of x will approach L para lumiit yung distance nilang dalawa. Okay. Ngayon, sa isa naman. The absolute value of x minus c is between 0 and delta. So, delta is, again, a very small number. So, ibig sabihin nito, yung distance ni x from c ay very small. Kasi between 0 and delta, dapat siya. So, yung distance ni x at ni c ay very small. So, paano yan mangyayari? Mangyayari lang yan if si x will get closer and closer to c. Or si x ay lalapit ng lalapit kay c. So, in that case, x will approach c. So, ang ibig sabihin lang pala ng limit ay yung value that f of x will approach as x approaches c. Okay, again, yung limit denoted by L is the unique real value that f of x will approach as x approaches c. So, yung titignan natin sa limit ay yung value na pinupuntahan ng f of x as your x approaches c. Okay. Now, take note, in a number line, if c is located here, there are two ways for x to approach c. The first way is from the left of c. So, si x nang galing sa left side ni c. So, x approaches c from the left. And the other way is, if your x comes from the right. So, si x approaches c naman from the right. Ito yung tinatawag nating one-sided limits. So, ano ba yung mga one-sided limits? First, we have the left-hand limit. It is the value that f of x approaches as x approaches c from the left or through values less than c. So, kung saan papunta yung f of x, as your x approaches c from the left. So, yung left side lang yung titignan natin, or through values less than c. In symbols, we have this one, the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the left. So, itong negative sign sa taas ng c denotes from the left, okay? Or the left-hand limit. Okay, the other one is the right-hand limit. It is the value that f of x approaches as x approaches c from the right or through values greater than c. So, kung saan papunta yung function as your x approaches c from the right. In symbols, we have this one, the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the right. So, yung positive sign denotes from the right or the right hand limit. Now, balikan natin yung definition. Ang sabi sa definition ng limit, it is the unique real value. When we say unique, dapat isa lang siya or distinct siya. Tama? So, in that case, para mag-exist yung limit natin, dapat yung left hand at yung right hand, the same dapat sila na pinupuntahan. Tama? So, dapat yung left hand at right hand equal sila. That's why we have this remark. The limit of f of x as x approaches c exists and is, own, is equal to L if and only if the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the left is equal to L and the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the right is also equal to L. In other words, the limit of a function only exists if and only if 
both the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit exists and are equal. So, dapat nag-exist yung dalawa at equal. When we say the limit exists, merong value na pinupuntahan. Otherwise, the limit does not exist. Okay? So, para mas maintindihan itong mga concepts na um, na-discuss natin, let's consider the following illustrations. First, let's investigate the limit of 1 plus 2x as x approaches c. So, here, ang function natin ay itong 1 plus 2x, while our c is equal to 1. Okay. Now, take note to evaluate the limit of a certain function, we need to investigate the behavior of the function from the left and from the right of c. Here, our c is equal to 1. Okay? And one way to evaluate the limit or to do that one to investigate the behavior of the function is through table of values. So here, we will investigate the table of values for values from the left of 1 and from the right of 1. Okay? So the first one is this, this table of values. So this is for values close to 1 from the left. Now take note if this is our number line. Yan. And if this is 1 here, take note we can consider infinitely many um, values from the left of 1. Right? But take note from the definition, yung distance dapat ng x at ni c ay very small, which is your delta. Tama? So in that case, we need those values that are very near to 1 from the left. So in this case, I considered the following values. I have 0, 0 0.5. 0 0.9, 0 0.99, and 0 0.999. These values are already close to 1 from the left. Tama? You can also add other values like 0 0.999999 para mas malapit talaga kay 1. But, if yung values kagaya nito can already show the behavior of the function, then there's no need para magdagdag pa ng iba pang values. Okay? So, how are we going to do this one? So, what we're going to do is, i-evaluate lang natin yung function at these values of x. So, isa-substitute lang natin yung mga x's here to our function. Ano nga yung function natin? We have 1 plus 2x. So, papalitan natin yung x ng 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.9, 0 0.99, and 0 0.999. So, what is the value of the function at x equal to 0? So, substitute lang natin yung 0 dito sa x. So, we will have 1 plus 2 times 0, and that is equal to 1. Tama? If 0.5 naman, we have 2. If 0.9, we have 2.8. 0 0.99, that is 2.98. And 0 0.999, that is 2.998. So, from that, as we can see here, so, as your x gets closer and closer to 1 from the left, okay, so from the left going to 1, so 1 is somewhere here, right? So, from the left of 1, as your x gets closer and closer to 1 from the left, the values of the function increases. Tama? Tumataas siya. And it is approaching to what value? So, as you can observe here, the values are approaching to 3. Tama? So, therefore, we have this observation. As x gets closer and closer to 1 from the left, the values of f of x get closer and closer to 3. And take note, the left-hand limit of a function is the value that f of x approaches as x approaches c from the left. So, as your c approaches 1 from the left, saan pa papunta yung function? It goes to 3. Tama? So, therefore, we can say that the left-hand limit 
or the limit of 1 plus 2x as x approaches 1 from the left is equal to 3. Okay? So, we have now the value of the left-hand limit. How about the right-hand limit? So, we will have those values close to 1 from the right. Now, the same as what we did sa left side or sa left-hand limit, we will get those values that are very near to 1 from the right. And what are those values here from the right that are very near to 1? So, here, I considered 2. 1.5, so mas lumapit siya kay 1, then 1.1, 1 1.01, 1 then 1.001. So, mas malapit na talaga kay 1 from the right. Okay, so the same as what we did, we will evaluate the value, uh, the value of the function as x approaches uh, at these values of x. Okay, so we have 2, 1.5, 1.1, 1.01, 1 .1, and 1.001. So, what is the value of f of x at x equal to 2? So, substitute lang natin. 1 plus 2 times 2, that is equal to 5. Tama? If 1.5, we have 4. 1.1, 3.2, 1.01, 3.02, and 1.001, you have 3.002. So, from here, we have this observation. As your x get closer and closer to 1 from the right, okay, so from the right going to 1, the values of the function decreases and it goes to what value? So, it goes to the value 3 again. Tama? So, we have this observation. As x gets closer and closer to 1 from the right, the values of f of x get closer and closer to 3. Therefore, our right-hand limit is equal to 3. Okay? So, the limit of 1 plus 2x as x approaches 1 from the right is equal to 3. Now, since the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit both exist and are equal. Therefore, we conclude that the limit of 1 plus 2x as x approaches 1 is equal to 3. Now, another way to evaluate the limit of a given function is through its graph. So, now, let's look at the graph of the function 1 plus 2x. So, here's the graph of f of x equal to 1 plus 2x. Okay? Now, looking at the graph of the function in the vicinity of x equal to 1. So, x equal to 1 is here. So, I have here an imaginary line, okay, that divides the graph of the function into two parts. And that is from the left of x equal to 1 and from the right of x equal to 1, okay? Now, it can be seen that the values of the function approach the level where y is equal to 3 because as your x approaches 1 from the left, the values of the function approaches this point here, right? So, ang gagawin natin ay trace lang natin yung graph. And from here, papunta siya dito sa point na to. And at that point, your y is equal to 3. So, it approaches the value y equal to 3. So, that's why our left-hand limit is equal to 3. Now, as your x naman approaches 1 from the right, it trace lang natin ulit yung graph. So, from the right, it approaches this point also where y is equal to 3, right? So, therefore, our right-hand limit is also equal to 3. And since they have the same um, value, then the limit is equal to 3, or the general limit is equal to 3. 
Okay? Mas makikita natin yung limit dito sa graph. Kasi ang titignan lang natin ay yung value na pinupuntahan ng function. So, ititrace lang natin yung graph. Now, if yung left side at yung right side nag-meet at the same point, yan yung limit. Otherwise, the limit does not exist kasi iba yung pinuntahan ng left side at ng right side. Okay? So, from here, our limit is equal to 3. Okay? Now, let's consider another case. Now, suppose we have this function. Let's investigate the limit of x squared plus x minus 6 all over x minus 2 as x approaches 2. So, our function is this one. This is a rational function. x squared plus x minus 6 all over x minus 2. And our c is equal to 2. So, the same with what we did. Sa illustration 1, we will look at the table of values from the left and from the right of 2. So, we have from the left muna. So, values close to 2 from the left. So, I can consider these values. Ayan. So, I have 1, 1.5, 1.9, 1.99, and 1.999. Now, if we are going to... Um, substitute these values of x here to our function, ito yung lalabas na values ng f of x. So, we have 4, 4.5, 4.9, 4.99, and 4.999. So, as you can see here, as your x gets closer and closer to 2 from the left, the values of the function gets closer and closer to what value? So, makikita natin na pinupuntahan ng function, ng values ng function ay yung value na 5. Tama? So, we have this observation. As x gets closer and closer to 2 from the left, the values of f of x get closer and closer to 5. So, this 5 now is our left-hand limit. Tama? Now, from the right naman, values close to 2 from the right. So, I can consider 3, 2.5, 2.1, 2.01, and 2.001. So, from that, if we are going to evaluate or substitute these values of x's here to our function, we have the following values of f of x. We have 6, 5.5. 5 5.1, 5.01, and 5.001. So, as you can see, as your x gets closer and closer to 2 from the right, the values of f of x, saan siya papunta? It goes to the value 5 again. Tama? So, as your x gets closer and closer to 2 from the right, the values of f of x get closer and closer to 5. So, from that, we can say that the right-hand limit is also equal to 5. So, in this case, the two limits, the left-hand and the right-hand limit, both exist and are equal. So, therefore, we can conclude that the limit of x squared plus x minus 6 all over x minus 2 as x approaches 2 is equal to 5. Right? Now, let's look at naman the graph of the function. So, this is the graph of the function x squared plus x minus 6 all over x minus 2. So, the same thing since our c is 2. So, we will look at the behavior of the function in the vicinity when x is equal to 2. So, this is when x is equal to 2. So, we have from the left and from the right. Now, observe that when x is equal to 2, the point here is a hollow point. When we say hollow point, it means that the value of the function at x equal to 2 is not defined. So, it is either indeterminate or undefined at all. Okay? Meaning, 2 is not included in the domain of the function. So, if we are going to try to substitute 2 to our function, 
this will become 2 squared plus 2, so that is 6, minus 6, that is 0, right? Over 2 minus 2, you have 0. And 0 over 0 is indeterminate. So from that, the value of the function is not defined. So therefore, we have a hollow point here. That's why. Okay? Now, but we don't care about that point, whether it is shaded or hollow. Kasi yung limit, ang tinitignan natin ay yung behavior ng function near x equal to 2. Not necessarily at x equal to 2 mismo. Yung titignan natin ay yung mga values near x equal to 2 lang. Tama? So from that, as your x approaches to from the left, the values of the function approaches this point. And that point is where your y is equal to 5. That's why our left-hand limit is equal to 5. Even though, hollow point siya. Okay? Ang titignan natin ay kung saan papunta yung function. And it goes to y equal to 5. So we have the left-hand limit, which is 5. And as your x approaches to from the right, it also approaches this point where y is equal to 5. So therefore, our right-hand limit is also equal to 5. So from that, since they are equal, then the limit of x squared plus x minus 6 all over x minus 2 as x approaches 2 is equal to 5. Even though the value of the function at x equal to 2 does not exist, right? So, we don't care really. Um, the, we don't care kung ano yung value ng function at x equal to c. Kasi yung titignan natin, as what I've said kanina, ay yung values, kung saan papunta yung values as your x approaches c. So, yung values lang near c. Okay? Now, let's consider another illustration. So, suppose we are going to investigate the limit of a radical function, that is, square root of x minus 3, as x approaches 3. Okay? So, the same thing ang gagawin natin, we will investigate the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit. So, we have a table of values for values close to 3 from the left. So, we have the values 2, 2.5, 2.9, 2.99, and 2.999. Now, observe that if we are going to substitute 2 to our x in our function, that will become square root of 2 minus 3. And that is equal to square root of negative 1, which is imaginary. So in that case, the value of the function does not exist or undefined. Tama? And if 2.5 naman, the same pa rin yung lalabas. Undefined, 2.9, undefined, undefined, and undefined. So from that, as your x gets closer and closer to 3 from the left, may pinupuntahan ba yung values ng function? So, in this case, walang pinupuntahan because undefined lahat yung values. Therefore, we can say that as x approaches 3 from the left, the values of f of x do not approach to a real number. So, in this case, does the left-hand limit exist? So, in, we have the left-hand limit does not exist. Kasi walang value na pinupon tahan. So, the limit of the square root of x minus 3 as x approaches 3 from the left does not exist. So, DNE here denotes does not exist. Okay? Next, from the right naman. So, values close to 3 from the right. So, I can consider 4, 3.5, 3.1, 3.01, and 3.001. So, from that, if you are going to substitute these values of x's here to our function, merong value na lalabas. And we have 1, 0 0.707, 0 0.316, 0 0.1, and 0 0.032. Now, observe that. As your x 
approaches 3 from the right, the values of the function approaches to what value? So as you can see, it decreases and it approaches to the value 0. So therefore, as x approaches 3 from the right, the values of f of x approaches to 0. So 0 now is our right-hand limit. Now in this case, since the left-hand limit does not exist, it violated our condition for the limit to exist, right? So from that, we can say that the limit of the square root of x minus 3 as x approaches 3 does not exist. Now let's try naman to look at the graph of the function. Now tingnan natin yung graph ng function. We have this one. Ayan. So let's look at the behavior at in the vicinity when x is equal to 3. So we have 3 here. Now from the left of 3, now, meron ba tayong graphs sa left ng 3? May matitrace ba tayo? Di ba wala? So, from that, we can say that the left-hand limit does not exist. While the right-hand, as you can see here from the right of 3, the values of the function approaches this point. Now, this is the common mistake of students. Yung tin since, as you can see, the graph approaches this point, yung answer agad nila ay yung 3. Now, take note, ang tinitignan natin if limit, ang pinag-uusapan ay yung value ng function or yung value na pinupuntahan ng function. So, ang titignan natin ay yung value ng y. So, in this case, anong value ng y at this point? That is 0, right? So, from that, the right-hand limit is 0. Now, since hindi nag-meet yung left at right-hand limit, so the limit does not exist. Okay, so we have this answer here. Now, for our last illustration, let's consider a piecewise function. Okay, so let's investigate the limit of f of x as x approaches 4. If f of x is equal to x plus 1, when x is less than 4, or x minus 4 quantity square plus 3 when x is greater than or equal to 4. So when we have a piecewise function, we need to consider the intervals given. Okay? Now our c is equal to 4. Okay? So we will consider values close to 4 from the left and from the right. Let's start with from the left. Now, Values from the left of 4 are those values less than 4, right? So, less than 4. In that case, we will use the function x plus 1 since it satisfies this condition x less than 4. Okay, and what are those values close to 4 from the left? So, we have 3, 3.5, 3.9, 3.99, and 3.999. Now, evaluating the function at these values of x using the first function here, the value of the function will be the 4, 4.5, 4.9, 4.99, 9, 9, and 4.999. So, as you can see, as your x approaches 4 from the left, the values of the function approaches 5. Right? So, we have this observation. So, our left-hand limit is equal to 5. Okay? Now, how about for those values close to 4 from the right? So, since from the right, those are values greater than 4. So, we will use the second function. Okay? So, what are those values close to 4 from the right? We have 5, 4.5, 4.1. 4.01 and 4.001. Now, evaluating the function at these values of x using the second function, we will have these values. Okay? So, as you can see, as your x approaches 4 from the right, the values of the function approaches the value 3. Tama? So, from that, 
we can say that the right-hand limit is equal to 3. Now, in this case, both the left-hand and the right-hand limit exist. However, they are not equal. So, in that case, we can say that the limit of f of x as x approaches 4 does not exist. Kasi, hindi sila equal. Okay? Ano ba yung... Um, form ng graph if that's the case. So, let's look at the graph. This is the graph of the function. Ayan. So, when your x is equal to 4, we have um, the behavior from the left of 4 and from the right of 4. So, as your x approaches 4 from the left, the values of the function approaches this point here. And at that point, the value of the function or your y is equal to 5. So, the left-hand limit is equal to 5, right? And from the right of 4 naman, the value of the function goes to this point. And what is the value of the function? That is equal to 3. So, from that, we have the right-hand limit equal to 3. And since they are not equal, based on the graph, they do not meet at the same point. So, the limit does not exist. Okay? So, that's it for the illustrations for the limit of a function. Now, let's try this one. Okay? Consider the graph of the function below and fill in the given table. So, we are given with the graph of the function and we are going to determine the left hand, the right hand, and the general limit at the values of C here. So, we have five values of C. Now, our first C is negative 3. Now, our y-axis is located here. So, this is 0, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. So, this is negative 3. Okay? So, this first dashed line, okay, determines x equal to negative 3. 3. Now, from that, to evaluate the left-hand limit, so we will just look at the behavior of the function from the left of negative 3. So, this is the graph we will just trace, and it goes to this point. And what is the value? That is equal to 1, right? So, our left-hand limit is equal to 1. Now, from the right, it goes to this point also. And what is the value? The same. That is 1. Since they are both 1, and from the graph, the left hand and the right hand limit, like we meet at the same point, so we have the limit equal to 1. So, it exists. Okay? Now, when c is equal to negative 1, so this is negative 1 here, the second dashed line, from the left, so we have this point here. And what is the value? So y? So that is still 1. So the left-hand limit is 1. Now from the right, so ito yung graph. Papunta siya sa taas. Right? Now what is the value? That is 3. So from that, our right-hand limit is 3. And since they are not the same, and based on the graph, hindi sila nag meet at the same point, the limit does not exist. Okay? Next, at x equal to 1, so this is 1, the third dashed line. Okay? So as you can see here from the left, dito siya sa baba papunta. And what is the value? You have negative 1. So negative 1 is our left-hand limit. Now how about the right-hand limit? It goes to this point also. Nagmimit sila. And that is also negative 1. 1. So, the general limit is equal to negative 1. Okay? Now, at x equal to 3, uh, c equal to 3. So, this is c equal to 3 here. Now, from the right, uh, from the left, it goes to this point there. And what is the value? You have 3. Okay? So, the left-hand limit is 3. Now, from the right, it goes to this point here. Again, we will look at the y-axis or the y-value. So, what is the value of y? We have 0 here, right? So, we have 
0. And since they are not the same or based on the graph, they do not meet at the same point. So the limit does not exist. Okay? And for the last value of C, which is equal to 5, it goes to this point here. Right? And that is 5. Okay? So we have 5. From the right, we have also 5 here. Since they are the same, at they meet at the same point, we have 5. Okay? So that's it for the limit of a function using table of values and the graph of the function. Okay? So thank you for watching.